Yo guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. Today is the video you've all pretty much been waiting for. We're doing the 7.5 upgrade inside my whole car. So we're changing out this screen. We're changing out the clocks. Um, 125's code and doing it all for me. Uh, we've been waiting for the mileage to basically go up. That's why it's taken a couple of weeks because I bought the clocks lower than my actual mileage on my car. So you have to basically put it on a bench and clock them upwards. We've just scanned the car to make sure everything's right before we go ahead with um, the retrofit. But yeah, we're going to start now. He's getting all the tools out. He's going to start pulling all the old screens out and then ret uh, fitting the new ones in. And they're going to need coding as well, obviously. So my car's coming into pieces now. Just taking everything out. You have to replace basically the stock trim. The screen needs replacing. This trim doesn't fit anymore, so you need new trim. You need the new clocks and the trim for that. This trim won't fit them clocks, uh, the new clocks. So you have to change four pieces basically straight away. This trim, this screen, this trim, this screen. And then obviously I'm running MIB1, as you know. So I'll have to change out to MIB2 as well in order for this to work. Yeah, this is where we're at now. I'm gonna explain now why you can't run the new screen in the center and the VC with MIB-1. Long story short, MIB-1 is the hardware that came on the pre-2016 Golf R-Lines, GTIs, GTDs, etc. That's the interface that came on the pre-2016. Mine's a 2015, so obviously mine came with that. Now, the reason you can't run um, the new screens, the 7.5 screens on MIB-1 is simply um, that the hardware isn't built for them. Uh, I've seen videos and pictures of people trying to do it with MIB-1 because the screen, the screens themselves aren't that expensive. You can probably get the screen and the trim for like £200. And what happens is it kind of, I'll, I'll throw in a clip, I'll find a picture and it kind of just makes, say you have one screen of the nav, it'll split it into two or into half and you get two, two of them on one screen and it messes it up. So you have to have the new interface box. Now, where, where it gets a bit complicated with VW is before they released the 7.5, they released MIB-2. So on say some 16 and 66 plate models you would actually have mib 2 with apple carplay but on the older screen but the screen is slightly different but it's not the 7.5 screen so a lot of people don't know about it which confuses them long story short you could have mib 2 in your car already and which means for you it's just a straight swap over of screens because you already have the hardware the, the expensive bit mainly is mib 2 the box itself and the coding because all of them need CP removal. They all need CP removal, which is component protection. Well, I was one of the unlucky ones that didn't know when I bought the car. So I went and just bought this car, not knowing. And if I'd known, I probably would have probably looked for a newer one because it costs a lot more to have it done on a MIB-1 car. If you have MIB-2, you probably save immediately like three to 400 pounds straight away. Because um, all in this is costing me like a grand. The main cost there is probably the VC. Uh, and the component protection removal because the central screens are cheap so yeah that's a bit of a background into the mib 2 and mib 1 and what you should look out for when you're buying yours if you're planning to do a 7.5 upgrade in your car i would recommend going for a, a 1666 onwards car and basically find yourself a coder i've obviously got 125 coding if you're local to him and you want to get it done by him and you're planning to all you have to do is when you're viewing the car uh, he'll ask you to send a picture of of the serial number of the screen or something if you send him that he'll tell you straight away if the car is mib one or mib two and then you'll know if that's a car that's worthy of going for or not if that's what you're planning to do just to mention as well i got i got it for around a grand because i actually found the parts quite cheap um so that was straight away part of the reason why i got it for a grand um and on top of that uh i was also doing a little deal obviously with the adil as part of like Instagram and YouTube promotion, normally you'd be looking between 1500 and probably 1700 pound. Uh, and that's if it's still for used parts. If you went for new parts from VW, you're going past two grand. So if you're one of them that likes buying new parts, then you're going past two grand. But mine, uh, yeah, all in, it's probably gonna cost me around a grand. So the screen's in now, plugged in. Obviously, it's thrown up a load of errors. It needs to be decoded now. Uh, that's where Adil comes in to start decoding it and uh, get it into the car because it's just thrown up a load of error lights right now. Where it already looks a lot better from factory uh in inside here which is an air you will have one of these you'll either have a usb and an auxiliary port like that or you'll have this which ends with like something like this um so obviously you'll have that that's why i had stock that is that's that's the sign you have mib one that is the complete sign that you have mib one um if you have mib two 
you'll have a USB inside because um, that's connected to your Apple CarPlay and stuff. So yeah, we've just changed that out now, but that's part of the upgrade you have to do. You have to change that out. It costs about 50 to 100 pound, um, depending on where you find it from. But yeah, that's like a, a very clear indicator of if you have mid one or two straight away, when you get in the car, you look at that and you'd know. So the screen is in now, uh, the central one, eight inch one. The trim is grey yet, I'm getting that sprayed shortly. Uh, I'm going to get that sprayed by Hashim, so that will all match up with the rest of the dash. It's because we couldn't get hold of a black one, but well, everything works as it should. So Adil is also a, a car coder, besides doing retrofits, he does a day-to-day -day coding as well on the cars. So as we're just waiting for the VC to be programmed in, he is uh, just doing a quick little coding session on my uh, central screen. So this is where we're at now. Middle screen is in. VC is in, fully coded, everything works. I've driven it for two days now, it's all perfect. Um, the two problems I had, this was grey. And my, this had already corroded from before. Um, so the black text actually corroded. But on the Mark 7s and 7.5s is different. On the 7.5s, the four part comes in red. And then the motion is the same as it is. So, what I did was, gave my little friends at TPS a call. And I got this brand new one. It's the actual 7.5 one, genuine part with the red four motion compared to my normal one. And obviously it's not corroded. So I'm going to change that over. And we also bought a brand new black trim from there. Comes with vents, I don't need them. But yeah, bought a brand new black trim from there, which is going to be changed over now. And then the dash is complete. The last thing to put in, which I've got at home, I even bought a 7.5 airbag, which is the honeycomb different effect. So I've got that as well. And then it's literally a full 7.5 interior. So we're gonna change that over now and then show how it looks. So transformation almost complete. This is where we're at now. The black trim's in. It needs a clean, all of it needs a nice clean down. I'm gonna get it all clean down. Black trim's all in, blends in much better than before. Change this trim piece over, four motion badge there with the red and it's a brand new trim piece. So now the VC part is brand new. This trim's brand new. This trim's brand new. The only one that's not been changed is that one uh, and this one. I'll probably end up doing them as well just to match it all up. But this is the whole dash now. My airbag light came on because I turned the ignition on as I unplugged this, so I'm going to get that coded out. But this is how the dash looks now. And um, it's a, just a complete transformation. It looks so much better. Honestly, um, I'm absolutely buzzing. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to skip to when I meet Harris gonna get some proper camera set up and I'm gonna give you a full run through of all the features of the VC, the 7.5 screen, talk a bit more about how difficult the process was and kind of what more it involves. So the next snap now, we'll skip straight across to when we're with Harris. So everything's in now, been driving it for about a week. We'll run through every new feature and pretty much every feature of this screen from start to finish. So we'll start, we'll just start in order. Radio, full DAB radio, didn't have this in my last one. Got full station list, it's all the boring stuff. No one ever uses radio anymore, but yeah, you get that. You get your full media, uh, SD cards, USB, all of that stuff. There's a reason my phone ain't connected. It's because of something else that I'm going to show you shortly. Um, it's a new feature and it's that good that I've never even used the um, Bluetooth on this car yet. I'll show you shortly. Um, same thing, you can connect your phone to it. Apple CarPlay as well, with full voice command can talk to the car it's pretty accurate as well it literally if you say something to it like take me xyz it'll work nav this is where the nav um you can have it either on here or you can have it on there this is what you get with the eight inch screen on mib 2 you can only have it on one or the other you can't have it on both at the same time if you get the 9.2 inch discover pro with mib 2.5 you can run the nav on both screens at the same time but i don't see the need for it to be honest you're either going to be looking at one or the other. You're not going to be looking at both at the same time. But if you want it, then you can have it with MIB 2.5. If you have MIB 2 and the 8-inch screen, you can't have the nav on both screens. Next bit, this is where it gets a bit juicy. Two reports, don't worry. My door's open on my key. You've got a full new th um, selection of options here. Off-road off -road option. It tells you all. I don't even know anything about off-roading, but it tells you all of this different stuff. You don't get this in the 7. You get this... Think blue trainer, which I don't think I'm ever going to need in a golf R, but it just tells you how efficient you're being out of 100. Your average MPG and all that kind of stuff. I don't know if you rev it doesn't change. No, it doesn't. Then you get driving data, it's the standard stuff. You get this in the Mark 7, obviously, it's just on a new interface. And then the most important, well, the, fun, the funnest part, the most exciting part that a lot of people love 
is the sport option, which is this. It's a performance monitor, which does actually. When you drive, it shows you your G, how much boost you're running. Uh, it shows you a couple other things. You've got the lap timer that you used to get on the old screen. It's here now with the lap timer like that. Um, but yeah, this is where things start getting more interesting. So this, when I press up, this is what my CarPlay screen's currently on. A lot of people are not familiar with what this screen is, and I'll tell you what it is right now. You go in your settings, you plug this into your USB, you go in your settings and simply connect your phone to it as a hotspot. You then go into the app section, and for copyright reasons, I can't play that. But I've got YouTube, full video in motion. It's not mirrored, so there's no lag. Say for example, I'll play my own video. It's a full like it's video in motion. There's no lag, and it's at night. It's like you're in a cinema because of the sound coming through the speakers. If you want to go even further, we've got Netflix. There's only three apps on here now because that's all I've downloaded. It's a full Android box with a full app store, so pretty much anything you can get on an Android app store, you can get on here. YouTube, Instagram, Facebook. I've even got my YouTube Creator Studio on here, which shows me my stats for how my videos are performing. Look, I've got Netflix here now. Best, biggest benefit to this is, it's not mirrored to your phone, i.e. it's not playing from your phone screen to the car. As you can see now, my phone's off and we're on YouTube here. So, it's, there's no lag, there's no delay between the talking or the rapping or whatever, whatever you're watching or listening to, between the, that and the actual video itself. It's completely in time, as if you're watching it on your phone. Um, when you mirror, you do get that issue that even if it's by the slightest, like half a second, there's a bit of a lag and a bit of a delay. So that's the best thing of this. And it basically, this is an MMB box, which I got a 125 code in. Since that video, we've come together and we now actually work together. Um, I supply the MMB boxes with the video in motion. They work with any car besides BMWs with Apple CarPlay. Any car that has Apple CarPlay, as long as it's not a BMW, even if it's a Lamborghini, if it's a Ford, it'll work. It's plug and play into your USB port. It loads up just like so. It's this little box here. It's literally plug and play. If we can get it out. It's plug and play. You plug it into your USB port. I just sit it in the cubby hole here. It's never bothered me once. I sit it in there. I close the flap. You don't even see it. It hotspots from your phone. So you'll be using your phone's internet, but what I'm planning on doing is I'm actually planning on buying like one of them Wi-Fi dongles for my car it directly off that so my foot because the only problem it gives me i've got plenty of uh, data the only problem is obviously it drains my battery there's a usb port in the box as well so you're not sacrificing a usb port you can still charge your phone off that but as everyone knows the usb ports directly from cars are pretty slow this is the reason i've just been watching videos either i'm on netflix driving around or i'm watching stuff or i'm using ways this is the sole reason i've not actually used i've not connected my normal phone because you can connect your phone to this as well take calls through that i've not even used apple carplay either uh, I'll show you, you get Apple CarPlay, which I'll show you now. So I've got normal CarPlay, completely normal. Spotify, Waze, Calls. I've got all everything here, but I just don't use it. I just use the box. Honestly, my phone's probably been in, my phone has been in once. And the reason for that is because I actually, the, the best way I, I find to use it, use the box, watch whatever you want or listen to whatever you want. I go on the normal nav, set that up. Now that's set. It's a black screen there, like I said, because it's actually on my VC here. That's fully set up. If you wanted to switch it, you just press view here. No, it's not view, it's map. The map switches to here, but it goes off the VC. If you switch it back again, just press map. Now it's on my VC, but it's gone off this screen. Then you simply go onto the screen. Your maps are working. I just connect my phone. All you do, you go into your hotspot, connects automatically. There you go. Connected. Go on whatever app you want. And it's that simple. Play whatever you want. My maps are on there. My videos are playing on there. And if you if you ever want to switch back at any point, for example, I'll show you now when this YouTube loads. If you want to switch back, the sound will still play. You just switch that. The sound still plays, even if you're not on the screen itself. So that's the best part. So I switch it again now. The sound's still playing. But yeah, that is that is the best feature I've had in this car. That's why I waited to show it at the end. I didn't show it through any of the video or talk about it. One more thing I didn't talk about was MIB 2.5, which basically comes only with the 9.2 inch screen that comes in the 7.5 Golfs. 
It's the bigger screen, I'll show you a picture of it. It's a 9.2 inch screen that comes on the 7.5. It's an optional extra, it's like a grand extra, I think. The difference to mine is it comes with no buttons here on either side. The screen's 1.2 inches bigger, this is 8 inch, that's 9.2. And the main difference you get is that it allows you to run the maps on both screens. Besides that, it's just a bigger screen and it costs like a grand extra. Um, it would have cost me about seven, 800 extra to get that in than this. And honestly, I didn't see the need. Another thing we've changed, um, I put a new, I, I just went a bit extra, I put a new steering wheel in, it's from a 7.5. I've got the view button put on it, um, which you don't get on the sevens. So I've got the view button, I put a new cover on it, a full Alcantara one from my company, Demonize UK. I even went to their extras of getting a 7.5 airbag cover, which differs to the seven, because the sevens don't have this honeycomb effect, it's just flat plastic like so. But the 7.5s have this honeycomb effect here. And uh, I don't know, it just looks a bit better. I did that, but I've got a custom airbag cover coming from this anyway in Alcantara. So this is just temporary. One more thing that happened this morning, because I said that we started working with Adil and we offer the, the retrofits and the MMB boxes through Demonized now. One thing happened this morning, customers come to us. He's got a 2014 Golf. He had a virtual cockpit fitted and he had the Discover Pro from the Mark 7. Uh, so the bigger screen button in the Mark 7, not this one. His virtual cockpit worked, but he didn't have maps on it and he didn't have Apple CarPlay. So he was like, I was like, if you upgrade the screen, because he said he already had MIB2 and I was certain that if he had MIB2 if he's running a virtual cockpit that's working on his car. Because what doesn't happen if it's not coded right, the car locks into safe mode because it thinks it's the, the v VC's registered to another car. It locks and the car goes into safe mode and doesn't start. Um, so I was thinking he must have MIB2 because his virtual's working. He's come to us this morning, we just said we'll change the screens out, uh, called the VC for the maps to work and they should be done. He's come to us and he's running MIB1 with a VC, MIB1 head unit, Discover Pro from a Mark 7 and a virtual cockpit. His maps ain't working, his Apple CarPlay ain't working. So we had to change his whole head unit, um, change his screen, change his USB port because that was faulty as well. That someone's done a complete botch job on his car, this is where you need to be careful. Someone's done a complete botch job, put a VC in with MIB1, that is madness. So we changed the uh, head unit to MIB2, coded that in. Changed his screen to the 7.58 inch one and then coded his Apple, activated his Apple CarPlay, activated his maps, and now everything worked as it should have, as you can see from this picture. Afterwards, everything worked as it should have. He's got the maps on there, he's got his Apple CarPlay and the upgraded screen, but before. So, as you can see before, he's running the virtual cockpit in a Mark 7 and he's running the Discover Pro from the Mark 7. I just couldn't believe it. And then his USB port, it didn't work. He showed us a video later on. And then we couldn't see from the face of the head unit. It looked, it, you can't tell unless you take the head unit out. You don't know what, if it's mid one or two. We showed us his head unit and everything seemed sweet. But yeah, it turned out that he had mid one. So this way you need to be careful that you don't get a botched job done. But yeah, uh, I'll wrap it up there. Any other questions, just pop in the, pop it in the comments and I'll try and help you where I can because I've learned a lot from having these installed as well. But yeah, please like. The likes make a big difference, so please like the video um, so we can keep getting more content out. Because the sooner the channel blows up, the sooner I can get Harris out of his job so he can come full time. And then we'll be doing <laughs> content every single day. And that's what I want to do. I want to get I want to get the channel to the point where he doesn't need to work a full time job anymore. And then we'll be getting content out every single day. I've got a lot of stuff coming. I'm going to talk about it in the next video. But yeah, please like. The main thing, please like and subscribe and then share. And uh, yeah, take care, peace out.